What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Casual Big Ten Podcast. Today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. My name is Kent Peterson. I am the host of this show, and on today's show, we're back talking hoops. Five, five quick hitter topics to get you guys excited about basketball. What's coming up? Who's playing well? Who's playing bad? We'll discuss all of that today on the show. But before we get to that, if you're watching on YouTube, as always, please hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. If you're listening on a podcast app, I think that you're probably driving. I always say that, but please drive safely. Also, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, you'll see behind me a big poster that I just got framed. Shout out to Grandma. My grandmother, I think she just found out that I was doing something along these lines. And uh, she went on Etsy and bought me this poster. It's pretty sweet. Looks pretty good where it's at right now. Um, That's not where it's going to stay. But I've been meaning to show the poster here on the show for a couple weeks now. And I keep forgetting to put it up behind me. So there it is. Poster looks good. It's good for one more year because uh, the other four teams that are joining the conference are not listed on the poster. And that's okay. Poster still looks pretty awesome. Big Ten country. Yeah. Looks pretty good, like I said. Um, Also, upcoming for the show, we will be doing the Bet Big Bowl Game Edition episode. I think we're going to try to do it tomorrow night. I might wait until Friday or Saturday to put that out. Just stretch it out just a little bit. Next Saturday, that's actually a good idea. Saturday would be a good day to get that out because... Next Saturday, the first bowl game is kicking off. It's Northwestern versus Utah in the Las Vegas Bowl. Next Saturday, the 23rd. It's coming up, man. Holidays are coming up. Fun time of year. We'll also have some more basketball stuff. Um, Don't know when. Don't know when. It's casual, Big Ten. I keep it casual. I don't know when I'm going to put an episode out. It might be Monday. It might be a Wednesday like today. <laughs> you just never know. You got to keep your eyes peeled for some new episodes when we're talking basketball. I'm really excited about the bowl games, though, coming up. And I'm excited to do that Bet Big Triple B episode. Bet Big Bowl Games coming up this weekend. I hope. I hope. I got uh, Wilson pinned down for that. But Bet Big Brad, I just cannot. You know, he's a busy guy. Really busy guy. So I don't know when we're going to be able to do it for sure. Hoping to get it done tomorrow night. All right, let's jump into these quick hitter topics real quick. Like I said, I have five that I'd like to discuss on the show today, all regarding hoops. The first topic is the non-conference schedule. We do not have another Big Ten conference game until January 2nd. That's a long time. It feels like we have to wait. So from now until the new year, it's all non-conference games. So I'm going to pick a few games that I would like you guys to pick out that are coming up this week that you're going to need to keep your eyes on. First up, Saturday. Huge slate on Saturday. I think almost everybody's playing Saturday. Um, But here's the games that you need to watch, though. Baylor at Michigan State. It's at Michigan State, but it's technically not on their campus. It's in Detroit at the Little Caesars Pizza Arena. The dojo is where this game is taking place. Baylor, number six in the country as of right now. Michigan State, desperate, desperate for a win. Man, just to stay at 500 at this point, just desperate for a win. I'm, I'm reading articles. I'm reading tweets that maybe they're not a con or not a conference team. They are a conference team. Maybe they're not a uh, NCAA tournament team. It's getting scary. It's getting scary. I'm nervous. I'm officially nervous. When they lost to Nebraska was when I switched last week on the show. I said I'm not concerned. They always start out slow. Um, but they always end up figuring things out because Tom Izzo is such a good coach and they're so talented. But I'm I'm worried now. Nebraska, uh, losing to Nebraska, even at Nebraska, that's not a game you, you should be losing if you're Michigan State. So they are uh, on my concerned list right now. Not concerned about this team, though. Also on Saturday, Ohio State is going to Atlanta to play UCLA. I d- I really, I guess I need to do some more research about why there's all these neutral site games in the middle of December. I don't understand why it's happening. I don't know if they're like charity events or what's going on, but UCLA, typically a good basketball school. I haven't watched them that yet this year, um, but should be a fun matchup. A, a nice Jersey game at the very least. Ohio State and UCLA, that'll be fun. Future Big Ten opponent right there. Also on Saturday, huge game for Indiana. Uh, We'll talk about this more in just a a little bit because I have Indiana as one of my topics, but 
Kansas coming to town for Indiana. And then the last one, I think the biggest game on Saturday is Arizona versus Purdue. This is in Indiana, but it's not at Purdue. It's at Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Uh, looked for tickets for this game. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have anything going on on Saturday. I'll be watching it for sure. But I thought, man, this would be a good one to just shoot up from Nashville. That's where I live up to Indianapolis. Not very, not a, not a super long drive in totally worth it to go see Arizona and Purdue play. I would love to be at this game. Uh, lower bowl seats, $1,400. Not going to make it. That's just not going to happen for me this Saturday. Um, I'd love to be there though. So if anyone's listening that has an extra ticket, holler at your boy, man. I would love to be at that game this Saturday. And then the only other game that I have highlighted, it's on Tuesday, but it's within this week. So I thought it was worth bringing up is Florida versus Michigan. This one's taking place. I don't even remember what the arena is, but it's somewhere in North Carolina. Don't understand why. I, I guess I need to look into this more about why there's these games. I just don't get it. But uh, for Michigan, a big game for them. They're kind of fringe right now. Are they going to be good? Are they going to be bad? All the games that they've lost, it seems like, have been pretty close, except for the Texas Tech game. Um, and then they got the win at Iowa, which we're not sure what Iowa is. We'll talk about them more in a little bit. But big game for Michigan. Florida usually, once again, pretty good at basketball. Haven't seen them play yet this year. But just like I said with Ohio State and UCLA, at the very least, a visually pleasing game, the Gators and the Wolverines on Tuesday next week. You don't have anything going on on Tuesday. Watch that game. It's going to be fun. All right. Topic number two. It's time to start talking about Minnesota as a serious team. They have been picked by everybody, it feels like, to be one of the last place teams in the conference. I'm starting to think that they're not that, though. I'm starting to think that they're not that. At this point in the season, they are 8-3. and three. Their eight wins, I had to double check this to make sure this was right. Their eight wins are all by double digits. Now, not against the best opponents in the world, not against the best, but double digit wins nonetheless. They're averaging in their wins a point differential of 20 points. They're winning every game that they win by 20 points on average, which, shout out to Wilson, I don't know if averages are the best thing to use when it comes to basketball stats. Also, on average, I'll bring up one more, their losses have been by 10 points. So if you're picking a Minnesota game or if you're gambling on one, doesn't matter who you pick. If you think you know they're going to win or lose, make sure that you're betting it by double digits because that's for sure going to happen. And by the way, that's not even counting. I didn't even, I, I think I did count that actually. No, I am counting the game last night. Game last night, they won by almost 40. I think it was 37. So just getting big wins. And here's what their three losses were, by the way. All to teams that I would have predicted they would have lost to anyways. It's Ohio State. Maybe not San Francisco. I didn't know that they were pretty good, but they are. And Missouri, the the game where they were winning and had the big comeback by Missouri uh, at their home floor, which was really disappointing. All three of those teams are top 100 Ken Palm teams. Ohio State's 27, so that's not a bad loss. San Francisco, 67, mm, medium loss. And then Missouri's dropping down to 77 at this point, starting to look like a little bit worse of a loss. But still, all three of their losses, top 100 Ken Palm losses. So I don't think that any of their losses are hurting them that bad at this point. Like I said, eight and three. Their next two games are Ball State and Maine. Very winnable games. Very winnable games for them. And how are they doing it? It's... Dawson Garcia, who well, I don't think he played last night. In fact, I know he didn't play last night. Got hurt two games ago. Hopefully he's okay because he's averaging 18 points and seven rebounds a game for them. Leading scorer. They're going to need him to get healthy before January starts when those conference games begin once again. Because I legit think that they could pick up, you know, maybe half of their conference games they can win. Look at the rest of the conference. There's a handful of teams you know are better than Minnesota. Everybody else is right on that fringe with them at this point. I think that they can win some of those games. They also have the freshman Cam Christie, uh, Max Christie's brother. He might be starting to figure things out. He's averaging 11 points a game. He's second on the team in scoring. And then, of course, Parker Fox. He's like my new favorite player. It's, it's real tough between him and Tony Perkins. I'm not sure who my favorite player is at this point. 
But Parker Fox is quickly moving up the list. He's got some amazing highlights. Every picture I see of him is absolutely hilarious. He had a dunk uh, yesterday where he was sticking his tongue out. I don't know how the camera guy caught it, but posted that on the uh, Minnesota Twitter last night. <laughs> looked hilarious. And then they took a team photo yesterday. I don't know. I just, I just think he's hilarious. He's standing in between two guys' like hips, and all you can see is his, his silly head. I don't know. I, 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 it's goofy to like somebody just because they're being silly. But hey, I like, I like watching guys that look like they're having fun playing basketball. And Parker Fox is one of them. Uh, 16 points last night for him. Also, I forgot to bring this up. Let me go to their Twitter real quick because there was uh, their point guard whose name is escaping me right now set a Big Ten record for assists last night with 17. Let me find this. Where's their basketball team at? Searching Minnesota basketball on Twitter. Minnesota, oh, it's it's called Gopher MBB. That's why I couldn't find it. Most dimes in a single game in Gopher history. I also think it was a Big Ten record, I was told. Record setting night. Here's all 17 of them. All right, here's the men's basketball uh, Big Ten account. Record-breaking night, Elijah Hawkins, 17 dimes to set a Minnesota single-game assist record. Well, maybe not, it's not a conference record then. Maybe it's just a Minnesota record. But that's still impressive. Minnesota's been playing basketball since Jesus was alive. So that's a, that's a very impressive record to have, you know? So congratulations to Elijah Hawkins. Listen, I think Minnesota's starting to put it together. I'm starting to believe in them a little bit more than I did towards the beginning of the year. All right, next team. Uh, actually, the next three teams, all the I teams in the conference, I think are worth talking about at this point. First one is Illinois. I, d <laughs> I feel like I have to preface this, but maybe I don't. I don't dislike Illinois. I do not dislike Illinois. I have no problem with Illinois. If you listen, <laughs> look at the comments on uh, some of the things that I tweet out, you would think that I hated Illinois, but I don't. Seven and two right now. Both their losses were to top 10 teams, at least according to Ken Palm. I'm not sure about actual AP rankings. I haven't looked at that yet, but it was Marquette and Tennessee. One was at home, one was away. They were both by seven points. Neither one of those are bad losses. Neither one of those are, you don't want to lose any games, but neither one of those are going to hurt you long-term when you're talking about uh, NCAA playoff seeding or even Big Ten seeding for that matter. It feels like they're a top three team in the conference. And right now, it's obviously Purdue, I think, is still the top team. And then it's either them or Wisconsin based on what the game, how the games have played out. Now, Ohio State's right there as well. But it feels like they could be in that top three mix at the end of the year. Definitely a double bye team, I think, for the Big Ten tournament if they continue to play like they are. January 2nd, their next Big Ten game. Because their next three games... I think are all winnable games for Illinois. I think that they're they're not even worth talking about. But the big test for them is going to be on January 2nd, the next Big Ten game. They have Northwestern coming to town. Um, it's a conference game, a chance to start 2-0 and in the conference for Illinois. And also, it's a really tough team to play. Really good defensive team. Um, they're going to... They're going to be able to score on you. They have Ty Berry. They have Boo Booey. So they got guys that are going to be able to come in and score on you, and they're going to be able to guard you really tough. Great. I'm really looking forward to this game. It's going to say a lot about both of these teams, what happens on the night of January 2nd between Northwestern and Illinois. Got to mention uh, TSJ. He might be the player of the year this year if Zach Eady didn't exist. Um, just putting up monster numbers, 21 points a game right now, and just he just looks... I talked about him already last week, but he just looks like really under control. He looks like he's letting the game come to him and uh, everything is coming to him really easy. So Illinois, hot right now. And I like them, by the way. I do not <laughs> dislike them. I do not dislike them, even though, like I said, people would disagree with you on Twitter, especially people that follow me. All right. The next I team, Indiana. They are 2-0 and in the conference already. They've already gotten to that point. They're the only 2-0 team in the conference. But Northwestern, Illinois, and Wisconsin are 1-0. They haven't played a second conference game yet. So I don't know if that's that big of a deal. They got the three-point win at Michigan. Listen, road wins in conference are huge. That's a big win for them. Um, they turned around and got blown out by Auburn. So a little confusing right there. Maybe Auburn's really good. 
Didn't watch that game, so I can't really comment on it. But then they have a massive game coming up, like I said, on Saturday against Kansas, who is coming to Indiana. Place is going to be packed. It's going to be super loud. Indiana's playing pretty well right now. I think that they could win this game. I really think Indiana is going to win this. I think they're going to win this game. I'm going to say it. I'll go that far. I think Indiana is going to beat Kansas on Saturday, and that's going to be a game that really turns some heads and says, whoa, wait a minute here. Is Indiana legit? Are they actually that good? Is Indiana going to be a contender this year? Huh? The next three games after that, Moorhead State, North Alabama, Kennesaw State, they could go 4 and 0 these next 3 ga- or these next yeah, they could go 4 and 0 these next 3 games. These next 4 games, they could go 4 and 0. If they could pick up this win against Kansas and really start to build up some momentum going into that Northwestern game. Khalil Ware, I think we knew that he was going to be a good addition for Indiana. I don't think we knew he was going to be this good. 16 points, 9 rebounds a game. Indiana, keep an eye on them. Look forward to that game on Saturday. I'm calling the upset right now. I think that they're going to beat Kansas for the third time I'm saying this now. I think they're going to beat Kansas, and they're going to start turning some heads towards Bloomington. All right, the last I team, it's Iowa, and they are disappointing this year. Five and five right now, 0-2 in the conference. They obviously lost to Purdue but then they let Michigan come to town and beat them by 10. That's a bad loss. Uh, you cannot lose to Michigan this year at home um, just because I don't think Michigan is that good. I really don't think they're that good. I was the most confusing team to me at this very moment because they are still coached by the same guy. They still have most of their core intact, and they've made a really good addition to their team. Peyton Sanford. Tony Perkins, Patrick McCaffrey, all those guys are still there. And then you add their leading scorer, Ben Cricky. How are we getting worse? What is happening? I think it comes down to defense. We know they can score. Top five tempo team in the conference. They're 33% from three, which is not the best. It's, it's sixth in the conference, and it's not like great shooting. I think we expected Iowa to shoot it a little bit better this year, especially with those same guys coming back and how well they shot it last year. But here's where it gets a little dicey for them. They can score 84.8 points a game. So far, that's best for second in the conference. The problem is they're giving up 79 points a game. That's worst in the conference. Can't give up 79 points per game and expect to win a lot, even if you are scoring 85 points a game. Even if you are, because some of those nights, you're going to miss a few of those clutch shots at the end, and you're already giving them 80 points, you're not always going to get to 85, even though you're averaging that right now, so that's kind of stupid to say that. But you guys get what I'm saying. They're giving up too many points. they got to start getting some stops on defense. Also, part of the reason they're not getting stops is because they're one of four teams in the conference that are being out-rebounded right now. That cannot happen. I don't think that any Big Ten team at this point in the season, should be getting out-rebounded. Now, later in the season, when you've played 10 conference games, obviously there's going to be more teams that are getting out-rebounded. But right now, you've basically played, what, eight or nine non-conference games against pretty weak opponents at this point, and you're getting out-rebounded? That shouldn't happen for any any team in the Big Ten. So, Iowa, you got to start rebounding, you got to start getting stops, and you got to continue, if not do better, shooting the ball and scoring. And then I think that you'll see Iowa turn around, maybe. Or they don't. Or they just refuse to play defense and they just continue to lose and stay at the bottom of the conference, which at this point is where they're at because they're 0-2. All right, Uh, power rankings. This is kind of where my Illinois stuff that I was talking about comes from a little bit. Um, Put out the power rankings yesterday. I have this whole big formula I've talked about on the show before that everybody on Twitter has... Um, 100% agreed with the formula that this is the right way to do power rankings. And there was no complaints yesterday whatsoever about the actual formula. Now, there were some people still upset about where their teams were. But then once I explained to them, hey, I did this whole formula and it's like an equation that I'm using. They were like, oh, hey, Kent, it's okay, man. I was wrong. 
that's exactly where my team should be ranked. So that's pretty much how my day went yesterday. It was really exciting. Um, I have Purdue number one. Wisconsin is number two. Ohio State's number three. Illinois is number four. Like I just said, I think Illinois is more of a top three team. But <laughs> right now, they're behind Iowa, or Iowa State. Ohio State by like point two points in my equation. So they're like one win away from being in the top three. Anyways, I have Nebraska all the way up at number five. Michigan, uh, some people thought might be a little bit lower, but they haven't played the worst teams in the world. They haven't played the worst teams in the world, and that's why they're a little bit higher. Even then, Northwestern, who beat Purdue, Purdue's got that one win, but then they've played like Ken Palm like 330, like four times this year. So their their strength of schedule is just really, really low at this point. Um, on average and just in general, other than that Purdue game. Minnesota, who I just talked about, up at number eight. Indiana at nine. I think that uh, Indiana will finish closer to like six or seven by the time the year is over. Uh, Michigan State, I, I could see dropping even further. They're at 10. Rutgers at 11. Iowa down near the bottom at 12. Maryland and Penn State, the two most disappointing teams so far this year at 13 and 14. Those are the power rankings. That was the quick hitter basketball episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Podcast listeners, I appreciate you. We'll be back later this week, hopefully by Saturday, with that Bet Big Full Game Edition episode. Some more basketball stuff coming your way. Make sure you're following on Twitter at Casual Big, Big Ten. Easy to say, at Casual Big Ten. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. We will see you guys in the future.